I'm Dave Ford and in this screencast I'm going to show how we can use Screener to create basic learning objects. Now Screener is a web-based resource, it's free to use and it integrates with Twitter. So you need to have a Twitter account really for it to work um, and you can sign in. I've already signed in here, you can see that it's recognised who I am. If you haven't got a Twitter account you can create one just uh, for the purposes of doing the screencast and set it to private so that nobody else can see it uh, and it's just for the purposes of creating screencasts. But once you've got that stage, all you need to do is go to the website, which is uh, screenr.com, and you'll get to this blue screen. We then go to the record button. And what it has to do, first of all, it has to run a test to check that you've got the right Java applet. If you haven't, it will prompt you to download it. It will then come up with a region that you can resize, uh, which is what you want to record. Now, for this exercise here, I've gone on to Expert, which is uh, www.nottingham.ac.uk slash expert, X-P-E-R-T. And that uh, is, a, is an area where you can locate uh, images which are released under Creative Commons. Now I've done a search for Volcano, and what it's brought up for me is a Volcano image here. Now let's say I wanted to turn this into a, a video-based learning resource. I'm just going to drag the sides of my uh, screen that I want to record so it sort of covers the um, the area I want. So I'm just going to drag that up and down and then I'm going to bring this down here. So I've got the, everything for my image within that region. What I then do is I click on the red uh, record button. It will go three, two, one and then you would start talking. Uh, and what you would do is you'd move your mouse around uh, as you talked about the different features of uh, the volcano. And I'm not actually going to do that now uh, because the purpose is to show how to create the screencast. So once you've done that, uh, at the bottom of your screen you have a little bar and it's got the um, uh, the recording time, it tells you I've got 17 seconds in of 5 minutes. I then click on done and what it will do if I then go back to my screener website is it shows me my resource. I can play it and, and just to check that it's done okay. I won't do that now because it'll be a bit weird with the recording. Um, and then you'd normally put in a description there and if you tweet it it will send it to Twitter. If you don't tweet it, which is ticking that option there, it allows you to post it. Okay. Um, you click on that, you have a blue bar which will move across and when it gets to the end it will allow you to publish it uh, to YouTube. I'm going to pause this recording and then I'm going to show you that process on a different screencast. Okay, so I'm imagining that I've published my uh, screencast. So this is a different video, so don't worry if that's different, but this would be the same as what you'd uh, recorded. But having published it, it will give you the option of playing, sharing, but if I go over onto the right-hand side here, we can download the, M the file as an MP4, so I can click on that and just save it locally as an MP4 file, or I can do the publish to YouTube option. Now what that will do is it will give in my details. And what I have to do here is type in my... Uh, login details for uh, YouTube and you click on publish. It'll take about a minute or so and then it'll come up to confirm that it's published. If I was creating teaching resources and I didn't want these teaching resources to be in the public domain what I would do is I would publish it to YouTube I would then go to YouTube and I would make it private. That way I've got a, a copy of the uh, resource on YouTube which I can use later on but it's not actually in the public domain. And that's it really, that's how you can um, create uh, simple uh, learning objects using Screener. Now if you wanted to, having produced your resource and having pushed it to YouTube and downloaded the MP4 file, you can then always delete it. Because videos that appear on Screencast server will be public, Okay, there's no way to make them private. The ones on YouTube you can make them private so that other people can't access them. So if you're worried about other people making use of your resources and you don't want that, all you do is you use Screener to create them, download the MP4, publish it to YouTube, make the YouTube thing private, and then delete the screencast, and then nobody else can make use of that resource.